See, we have a lot of people in this house, we're Pentecostal, so we believe in speaking in tongues. And we speak in tongues, and the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, that we speak in tongues, and one of the ways that tongues works in our life is that it edifies our spirit. So we have a lot of people speaking in tongues, and their, their spirits are supposed to be coming edified, but the problem is they speak in tongues with is the evidence, the initial evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is stinky. Because what's happening is they're stepping into the shower, but they're not allowing the fragrance or the aroma of God to permeate their life. Are you, hello? Does that make sense? It's like that man that walked in the doctor's office. Doc, I stink. He says, what kind of soap do you use? Soap. What soap? We can come into church and we can sit under the spout where the glory comes out, but if we don't apply the soap and the sweet-smelling fragrance of the Holy Spirit, then what will happen is we'll come in, we'll get rinsed off, but we'll leave still stink, having a stinky attitude. People come up to you and say, hey, brother, shut up. Have you given everybody stink eye? Now, Pastor Janelle gives me stink eye all the time in the front row. And I, I used to be so irritated at Pastor Janelle. I'm like, why are you always going to give me that look? Am I, am I preaching horrible? And then one day, see, like right now, that look. That one right there. If I could only take a picture, someone get that. And I, one day I approached her, I said, why you got to give me that dirty look in the front row? I'm preaching my guts out. And you're looking at me going, what? And she says, what are you talking about? And then we start, because of her glasses, she has a tendency to squint. <laughs> and I'm over here all upset. I'm like, you ain't my guts. I'm your brother. Where's the love? And she's like, I'm just trying to see you. Like, how can you miss this, baby? Come on. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes we get misunderstood, and I understand that. Look, people will misunderstand you, and that's where offense comes in. But the truth is some Christians are just straight up ornery. And you're like, dude, use some soap. You stinky. You ever... You ever <clears throat> If I offend anybody in here, I know we're talking about stinkiness, but um, I, it's not my goal to offend anybody, but I'm just going to use some stories that are applicable to my life, okay? Anybody ever come up to somebody and you give them a big old hug? See, I'm a youth pastor, huh? They play basketball in the gym before service, and then they come, oh, pastor, and you're like, hey, oh, and you get engulfed in the stench of the sweat and they haven't been taking a shower for three days because they're youth and they don't believe in that kind of stuff and so it's like this compiling of smell upon smell upon smell and when they hug you all of the three days that have compiled upon this person's skin that the stench is so bad that it's actually hanging off it's become a part of their skin it's become one and they hug you and all of a sudden it sticks to you and for the rest of the night, you're smelling something. In our prayer chapel, it's Tuesday morning, our prayer chapel, you don't wear shoes in the prayer. You got to take your shoes off before you get in the, take your shoes off. Before, anybody ever have that happen to you? You walk in the prayer chapel and someone's like, Psh, shoes off. Don't you? And you take your shoes off, and you don't want to because you know they stink really bad. <laughs> Tuesday morning, they come on up, and we're up there, and everybody takes their shoes off. And there was a, it smelled like a guy's locker room. Any men know what I'm talking about in this place? Anybody know that stench? Some of you ladies know that stench because the ladies' locker room was right next door to the guy's locker room, and the stench came over the top. And I'm sitting there going, what is this? All day Tuesday, I smelt locker room. And I'm walking around going, what is that? And you're freaking out because I, I smell it and it's stuck up in the hairs 
that need to be plucked in your nostrils and it's just staying and it permeates you and you walk all day in that. Anybody ever been there before? The same thing happens when you hug somebody or when you get defiled like Dr. Morocco was talking about on Sunday. There's like this defilement that comes on you when you hug or you get influenced or defiled by a stinky person with a stinky attitude. You go up to pay for something. Or go, you know, you, you walk into church or something and you encounter somebody that just had a bad weekend. They didn't get their coffee. Man, <laughs> they didn't get their coffee. We need these Christians to stop using that excuse. You just ornery, okay? <laughs> you just ornery. I haven't had my coffee yet. Don't wake me up. All right, you need Jesus. It's okay. And they affect you, and the worst part is all day that whole thing just sticks with you, and you're affected. It happens too much in the body of Christ. And the more I began to pray it, I said, Lord, I, I don't understand it. What is the problem? What is the issue? For some people, it's a compiling of offense. And what's happened is they've got offended in the past and they've never dealt with it. They've never dealt with that unforgiveness. And what happens is it just becomes this snowball effect in their life. And all they give out is offense. There's a phrase that some people use, hurt people, hurt people. Healed people, heal people. Well, that's, that's somewhat correct. And I think it happens sometimes, not all the time. But the truth is what, there, there's a stench that comes off of you that affects people. You can vicariously be affected by someone because of their stinky attitude that comes on you. But the sad part is, as Christians here in 2 Corinthians and more passages that I'm going to read, it talks about the fruit that's supposed to come from our life, the fragrance or the aroma that's supposed to surround us. It's the aroma of the Spirit of God. When people come around us, there should be a different fragrance on us. There should be a different smell. When someone gives you a hug, something holy, something righteous, something pure should be attached to them. People shouldn't come in the church and feel, feel like they just got griped out. Man, what is that lady's problem? She ain't sanctified. He's not sanctified. Hello. The problem is this. In order for us to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, we have to spend time with the Spirit. There's been times when I've been in a hurry to take a shower. Got five minutes. Let's go. We got to go. We got to go. My dad growing up. We lived in this one house there in um, Pakukalu area, and uh, he would drive around the neighborhood. He'd get in the car, he'd get in his car, and he'd pull down the driveway, and then he'd sit there. And we're all getting ready, and he'd honk. Let's go! We're going to be late! And then he'd take off. And all of us was like, oh my gosh, God's leaving us! And he'd drive around the neighborhood, and he'd pull back up. Let's go! You remember that, Pastor Janelle? I'm telling you, it used to freak me out. And there were moments where I'd jump in the shower and be like, all right. Let me help you understand something. There's only so long that application will last. Because we all know sometimes you just got to get a loofah scrub. And you got to get that loofah scrub and you got to get off all that dead skin. And there's like eight different applications that need to come with a proper shower. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Anybody shower takers in this? I any shower takers in this place. Now, there's, ca there's casual shower takers and then there are professional shower takers. Some of the guys in my youth ministry, 